Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Marissa. Um, if you guys don't know who Marissa is, it's your big sis Mo. It's Mo Curls. Um, I know my hair is starting to look crazy, y'all. Like I went out last night, the, the bottom, you can literally see that it's like starting to curl back up. So I'm gonna wash it soon, I promise. Um, probably on like Wednesday or something. So I wanted to talk about like toxic relationships, specifically, um, I'll say specifically my most significant relationship. Um, it was also my longest one. We almost made it to five years. So I'll say we were in a relationship for like four, like four years. And then that last year was like on and off. Um, let me also make this very clear. This is in no way any hate um, to my ex. Uh, me and him don't have any issues. I think he still watches my YouTube videos. I don't know. When we were in a relationship as like a, like a, a boyfriend thing. He would watch my YouTube videos, which was, it was sweet. Um, so if he does see this, it's my story to tell. But um, this is in no way like me trying to like shade him or whatever. We don't have any issues. We're not friends, but we don't have no, no problems. Um, so let me just start by saying that when me and him met, um, I'm, I'm gonna just take ownership. I, I lied a lot in the beginning of the relationship and it's because I didn't want him to think less of me. So my ex is two years older than me. Um, when we met, I think I was like, we talked for like a year, I think. Um, we, we both are from upstate New York, but he was living in one city, I was living in another. So I would literally drive 45 minutes to see him. Um, or sometimes he would come back to the city that we're from. Um, but I think I was like 24 or maybe 25 when we met. Um, if some of you guys are going back to my dating older men experience and be like, wait a second, you said you were 23, 24 dating that older man. Like I said, until you're in a serious relationship and exclusive with somebody, you better date them all. Um, so when we finally decided to get serious and he was like, okay, we are, um, you know, uh, what is it? Exclusive. Um, after that year of being exclusive, so he had moved to North Carolina first. And then after he moved, I was like, hey, I think I should also move as well. And he was like, okay. He was like, I also want you to move here. At, the, at this point, he was living in an apartment, but then he was gonna move into a townhouse so we would have more space. He was like, I think you should move here as well. He said, okay, Marissa, before you move, make sure you're saving before you come. I said, of course. And of course I didn't save. I didn't save before I came. I Every month that I was like, okay, I should be saving money. I would just keep like buying new clothes or like new shoes. I, I had horrible spending habits. I was young and just like doing whatever I wanted. So that was the first initial part of me like not being honest. Um, so when I, I, I remember this so well. And also the reason why I couldn't be honest, it wasn't only because, um, it wasn't only because I didn't want him to look down on me. It was also because like, I didn't trust him. I, I didn't trust him to be honest, um, which is so funny to say it now because I didn't realize that another reason why I wasn't being honest is because I literally didn't trust him um, with, with that information, which was so crazy. So I remember we drove down to North Carolina because I had to bring my car, I wasn't gonna ship it. We were driving down, it was me, him, his mom, his dad, and his little brother. And mind you, this drive was supposed to take like 11 hours, instead it took like 16. His dad had like a broken leg, his little brother was doing the drive, his parents want to stop and take naps. It, it, took, a, it took a long time. So his parents ended up staying like a week a couple days with us and then when they left um I had like a bag of clothes that need to be washed I didn't wash before I had like left from upstate New York and he's like the, the bag of clothes just sat there for a couple of days the reason why it did is because by the time I like got to North Carolina I was like broke like I mind you I didn't save anything and then I was spending the money the little bit of money that I did finally save I had by the time we got to North Carolina I had spent it so the townhouse that we lived in, it was in a community where you had to walk down to the washer and dryer and you had to pay um, to wash your clothes. So he was like, you know, when are you going to wash these clothes? And I'm just like, I'm going to wash them. Little did he know, I literally didn't have the money to wash them. So he thought that I just was just like letting the clothes just sit there. Like I was just being lazy and just didn't give a shit. But really it was like, no, I'm actually broke. And he just, he just didn't have like, it's like he just wasn't like putting the, the, the dots together. It's just saying like, hey babe, here's my card. Go, you know, wash the clothes or whatever. It was just like, why are you not doing this? And I'm just like, oh my gosh. Another thing that I was not honest about 
before I had left from upstate New York, I was, I didn't have to do anything in the house. My grandma washed my clothes. My grandma cooked my meals. Like she literally cooked my meal prep. Um, she did everything. I don't know why she, my grandma's Jamaican. I don't know if any, any other people are used to that sort of treatment from their grandmas, but um, everything was done by her. Mind you, I, I worked since I was, uh, I, when I was in high school, I had a job. I had three jobs at a time before like I, I worked like I wasn't like it, it wasn't out of like laziness it's literally because I think my grandma's way of showing love and affection is just like it's just doing things it's, it's just acts of service I guess so I had never washed clothes so when I moved to North Carolina he's like okay like you know I, I, I think I have washed all the like the colors cl color clothes and white clothes together which I knew was a no-no but it also tracks because I just didn't really have money to wash them separately child it, it was a struggle it was a struggle so um within like within like three months of us living together I noticed that the woman that he wanted is a woman that I never wanted to be. He wanted like a, a Betty homemaker. Like he wanted meals cooked like every day. Like, um, I, I washed my clothes and his clothes. Um, like he literally wanted somebody who was like his mom, which his mom was like a stay at home mom. She, she, um, didn't work. I don't want to tell too much of her tea because that's her business. Um, but he wanted somebody like his mom. And I was like, I will, never be that sort of woman because I don't see that for myself I I enjoy working um I had a business in my mind that I wanted to start and I was like yeah that's not gonna happen so we started to clash real bad when it came to um gender roles we started to clash real bad and what I also started to realize is that he would gaslight me really really badly like he would he would start to gaslight me and it will always happen when we went out drinking you know like when you go out drinking with your partner you feel like okay i'm with my partner this is my protector i can drink as much as i want and he will let me do that he'll be like girl go ahead take your shots by the end of the night we would get in such bad random arguments and the next day the information or the argument would be a little bit fuzzy like i'd be like damn like i can't recount exactly what happened last night and the things that he would tell me that I would be saying or doing, I'd be like, it's like my gut would just be like, that didn't happen. Like, it, maybe it happened, but it didn't happen the way you're saying it happened. And then bits, bits and pieces would start to come back to me. And he would get annoyed if I brought it up. Like, why are you bringing this up? Like, I don't want to talk about it now. And I'm just like, I'm like, okay, I will let it go because I'm just like, I don't want to continue arguing with him because this is my my partner. This is my, one of my best friends. Like, I, I, I don't want to continue this. Um, So... After a year of us living in our townhouse, um, he decided that he wanted to buy a home. Mind you, this was right before the pandemic started, right before it. Um, and I'll never forget this, we were in our bedroom and the way that this process moved, it moved so fast, I didn't have a say in this home process. Like, he was like, I wanna buy us a home. And he was like, uh, I was like, well, I just don't know if I'm ready for, for that or whatever. And he said, well, I'm gonna buy a house. So. His plan was we were going to move in with his best friend and his best friend's wife um, until the home was done being built and we could move into the house. And he was like, listen, you can either move in with me and we'll call them uh, Michael and Sarah. He said, you can either move in with me, Michael and Sarah, or you can go get your own apartment. Hello? I was like, what the fuck? Like, why am I getting, first of all, why am I even getting this energy? Like, I'll... I'll I was so confused because I'm just like, wait a second. If you're giving me the option of moving into my own apartment, this is your house. This isn't, this isn't my house. This is your home that you're buying. Mind you, we had never had the whole 50-50 conversation that people are having right now. That's so, I feel like it's sensationalized. Like, do whatever you want in your relationship, right? The whole 50-50 conversation, we never had it. But when we were living in our townhouse, I was giving him $500 towards like utilities. He wasn't paying any of my bills he wasn't paying all the bills I was giving $500 towards, towards utilities um and I wasn't making as much money as I'm making now I wasn't salaried I wasn't making as much money as I'm making at my current job um and he wasn't either he he wasn't making as much money so I was, I was okay with the whole paying the utilities thing once when we talked about the house he still wasn't with paying the mortgage on his own so mind you mind you not only would I not be on the mortgage this would be his house 
I would be paying, I think he said like, oh, we'll drop it at like 250. I'd be paying 250 towards his house. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, I feel like I'm getting the, the bad end of the stick here. Like, wait a second. Um, now at this point, so before when we would argue, um, I would be like shutting down. Like I, I would start to shut down. Like we would, we would be arguing. Um, he knew that a trigger for me, this, this, this is like a, I'm, I'm so like on both sides of the, the spectrum with this, but you know how people be like, don't tell the new guy that you're talking to or the new person that you're trying to get involved with. Don't tell them what you went through in the past because they'll use it against you. Man, um, a trigger for me, and this is a trigger from childhood, is if somebody ices me out and just doesn't speak to me. Like if they're mad at me and they just don't talk to me, that's a huge trigger for me um, from childhood. And I told him that because, you know, this is my partner. I love him. I want to be open with him. He would, when I tell you he would ice me out, I mean, he would go days without talking to me, like icing me out, not speaking. I would be crying in this man's face. He didn't give a shit. He blank. I don't give a shit. Like you, you, you've cried so many times. What are you, what are you crying for? Like, I, I don't even believe that at, at this point, I just felt like he felt it was like crocodile tears. So he was like, I'm not, I don't, I don't care. Um, and that was when we were living in our apartment. So the arguments, the bad arguments that were happening were happening behind closed doors. Please let me tell y'all something. Check on your friend who's in a serious relationship who posts quotes about what women should be doing, what women shouldn't be doing and how amazing her relationship is. And the one who gives random unsolicited advice because I was her in that relationship. Mm -hmm. I was posting the, the, the quotes on Facebook. I was, you know, doing little story quotes and oh, every day is Valentine's Day with it. Maybe that man was buying himself designer and bought me no designer throughout the relationship. <laughs> that, that man was getting with me when it came to arguments and I was look around everybody on mute in the beginning. Cause towards the end I said, baby, I'm about to get right back with you. Cause I'm over it. But behind closed doors, the arguments were so toxic. And so I, after a while I was like, he's treating me like his enemy. He would, he would go low. And after a while I was, I'm, I'm going lower. And the way we would argue, it became like ops. We were two ops trying to hurt each other. It was, it was intense. So, um, the arguments started to flow out and friends would start to see the way he was talking to me and question it. Like, I, I remember after we broke up, he had a conversation with his home. Like he told me about a conversation that he had with one of his best friends and they were just like, you know, you be talking to her a little crazy, like that, like, and he's just, and he didn't see it. He didn't see it because I think it's because a lot of the time when the arguments would happen, we would be drinking. Um, but another, I have so many examples of where I was, being gassed or just lied to. Like, let me let me tell you about one example when I was lied to. We went to Atlanta, right? For the Beyonce concert. I, was this a Renaissance tour? On the Run. It may have been the On the Run tour. I, I can't remember which tour it was, but this will be my first time seeing Beyonce. I was so excited, so unbelievably excited. And something happened where he lost his phone. His, his phone fell down the stairs. All, so we were at like the fourth level. His phone fell all the way back down the stairs. And he said, shit, I'm gonna go grab my phone. We, for some reason I said, okay, I'll just stay up here. Meet me back up the stairs. I didn't see him again until four o'clock that morning, that morning or the next morning. So also didn't see Beyonce. We get to the concert, he loses his phone. I don't see him again. Somebody called me from his phone and it's this white guy and I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, yeah, I just found this phone downstairs and uh, I called the, you were calling, the, they, picked the, they, 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 they picked up the call, brought me the phone. The story that he gave me, finally he called me from a random person's phone. He was like, they were fighting inside the concert. All of us got kicked out because they thought I was fighting. Um, then he took an, an Uber, the Uber broke down. He said, then he told me that when I got back to the hotel, so what happened was I didn't have my cards on me. Like I also didn't have the Uber app in my phone. And for some reason, anything that could, could go wrong went wrong that night. I will never forget this little 18 year old kid who was um, working the concert. He said, I, I'm, at this point it was like 2.30 in the morning. I'm just sitting outside the concert by myself at this point. He said, ma'am, call an Uber. And he gave me his phone and he paid for the Uber. And it was like $50. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like I, don't, I can't pay you back. Like I, 
I don't, I'm, I'm stressed. I'm just, I'm just freaking out. And he was like, don't worry about it. He was like, you know, this is Atlanta at basically three o'clock in the morning. You need to get home. So I don't, I, I highly doubt whoever sees this video, but thank you so much. You were an angel that night. I gave it to the hotel room and I'm pissed. I'm like, where have you been? Like I'm cursed. I'm like, where have you been? And he's like, they were shooting at me at the gas station. Something happened. I almost got robbed. Immediately my anger turns to oh my goodness this he could have passed I, I feel awful um yeah months later um we went to I, I i we went to the verses one of his friends was hosting the verses at their house it was jeezy versus uh gucci Mane, and he was telling his friend about the beyonce concert for some reason we we're talking about the beyonce concert a lot of us who are from upstate new york we all know each other and he was telling them about our experience and he laughed and he said yeah, you know, um, I had lost my phone and the Uber had broke down. He was like, I knew she was going to be pissed off. So I had made up the story that a shooting happened at the gas station. And, you know, so she wouldn't be so mad. Hello? You lied about almost passing? What? And mind you, that wasn't... Let me give you another example. This is so crazy. Um, this one we had broke up and now he was living in his house. I'm sorry if I'm all over the place. I'm, I'm just thinking of the craziness. Now he's living in his house and he, I was on the phone with him. I was, I was pissed off about something. And I always said, if a man ever called me out my name, I'm out. He called me a bitch on the phone. He's, and he was screaming. He said, bitch. And he, and he hung up the phone on me. I said, oh, you're, you lost your fucking mind. Mind you, me and him at this point, we had lived like, he lived like 15 minutes away from me. I drove to his house because I was about to get with him. Drove to his house. And you know, he had one of those passcodes on the door where you could like punch in like the, the number, like the passcode or whatever to the door instead of like unlocking it with the key. I punched in the number, he had changed it before he had left the house. His cousin though, mind you, I run the doorbell because I didn't know if he was home or not. His cousin was home. His cousin's like, hey cuz, like, you know, what's up? And I'm like, oh, nothing, mind you. At this point, I turn off the madness. I'm just like, oh, nothing. Like, you know, where's, where is he? We're gonna, we're gonna call my ex Tyler. I'm like, where's Tyler? And his cousin's just like, oh, you know, he stopped off for a second, but I'll let you in period let me in let me in so i get in the house and i'm just sitting there sitting at the dining room table waiting for him to walk through the door he comes in and i'm like so you called me a bitch like what's good and so he's like marissa like and he and he looks like dread is on his face i'm like okay what's going on he's like just got pulled over by two cops they walked up glocky's out pointed at me and I'm just like oh my god this man could have died I'm over here pissed off because he called me the b-word which in my head I'm like he called you the b-word but I'm just like I, I feel terrible once again I'm unarmed I feel terrible I'm he disarmed me again months later we're at like a, a cute little get together a game night and he admits that that part never happened did he get pulled over yeah he did get pulled over so he claimed they never there were no Glockies. No Glockies were pulled out on him. What? So I'm just like, yo, this man is a pathological liar. Like, it's actually, it actually started to scare me how easily he was lying to me and how it would disarm me every time to the point where I was like, I really do have to leave this person because if you're lying about this and these are big, mind you, these are not small lies, these are big lies. I started to get scared of what else he might be lying about and we were still um not to tmi but you know we're we're in a serious relationship for so long that we weren't use, using protection at this point like it was like you know this we're it's just me and you once he started lying i was like oh no babe it, it, at, at that point we really weren't having sex as often anymore like i was i was mentally i was i was done so physically it, we weren't doing that so um Damn y'all, we're gonna have to make this to a part two probably. <laughs> the video's getting long, we're at 19 minutes. But um, in the end, what started to happen was I was exhausted. And I wasn't even just mentally exhausted, I was becoming physically exhausted. Right now I'm 140 pounds, right? Um, I work out six days a week, you know, I booty done growed. Uh, I'm just loving the way my body's looking. At that point, I was so stressed out and I started to have anxiety like i was becoming so anxious when he would call me or when he would start to come around i was becoming anxious but i remember i started to lose weight 
I couldn't even eat. I was so anxious that I couldn't eat. I lost so much weight. Like I dropped from, I was 137 at that time. I dropped down to 115 pounds. And I, I just remember I text my best friend or such a voice note. And I was like, hey, Key, um, do you think I could come just for a couple days? Do you think I could come um, home, which is upstate New York? I was like, do you think I could stay with you for a couple days? Of course, my best friend's like, yes, of course, bitch. Like, come on. Little did she realize I was about to break up with him. And mind you, him and her knew each other before me and before I knew her, before I knew him. So I was about to break up with him. And she didn't even know it before I was flying home. Like, I didn't even tell her before I flew home. I told her when I got there. Um, okay, let's make this into a part two. Because there, there's there's more things and I feel like I'm all over the place. I just want to unjumble my thoughts. So I'm gonna, we're going to circle back. We're going to make this to a, a, a part two. But make sure you guys are subscribed. Um, I'm not going to wait too long to, to do the second video. Um, make sure you're commenting. Let me know if you guys are liking this. Apparently, you guys are liking the story times and... You know, just the, the, the chats. Uh, I, honestly, it feels like a fucking FaceTime call with like my sister or something. And just recapping how my, when I talk to my sister, she always says your dating life and your lifestyle reminds me of like an episode of Insecure. I don't know if that's a compliment or not, honestly. And which which character from Insecure? I'm about to call her and ask her that. But anyways, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be back, guys. I'll be back.